Well, hello there, and you're very, very welcome to today's Room Junkie show. I'm actually a couple of minutes late. I had trouble with my earphones. So I'm just hoping that some of you will be able to join me and I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear me because yesterday I had a bit of a disaster. I three times I attempted to do a video three times and on the first time and on the second time there was no volume. So on the third time I got lucky and it was fine. So, so yes, there are people popping in. So do tell me where you are. Tell me what kind of a day it is. It's a gorgeous day here. Absolutely gorgeous day in Donegal. It was so sunny and lovely this morning. It really, really was. Um, sorry, I'm just turning off my phone. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about design paralysis because it's something that affects a huge amount of people. Um, whether it's the paralysis that stops you from starting to take on a project in the first place, um, or whether you start a project and you get stuck halfway through. So um, I'll wait and see who's going to come in. Do say hello to me. Um, love to know who's here. Uh, OK, just checking there. No comments as such. No comments yet. Anyway, I'm going to sit and relax. Um, oh, jeepers. That's a good start. I almost knocked my flowers over. Okay. A um, couple of people there don't know who's there, but it doesn't matter. Um, one thing that I will tell you, when I'm finished, um, when I'm finished this live video, and if you have any questions as well pertaining to your own project at, at home or whatever, do please ask me here. A few people have sent me in questions, and um, Helen, yours was one about the paint color for the green bedroom, the green curtains. I have literally just picked a color for you and sent that to you. Uh, it's been a difficult week for me, to be honest. I've been well challenged in many ways. And um, towards the end of the week, Thursday and Friday, I won't be available to anybody, I don't think, particularly on Friday and lesser so on Thursday. Um, but I still have a full agenda for you this week because um, yesterday I played a repeat our replay of the Claire Ronan interview, which was fantastic. Claire is just the most amazing lady and her take on life was so enlightening and funny and honest and frank. It was great. Um, so today we're going to be talking about design paralysis and that's fine. Tomorrow I've got a treat for you. Caroline Duffy, the artist, textile artist um, and artist artist is going to be with me. So we'll be talking about color and trends and how to use color and how she comes up with color and how she comes up with her design. She, she creates the most amazing cushions and silk scarves and regular art. So I love what she does. It's lovely. It's an absolute tonic. It's gorgeous. It's my kind of art. Lots and lots of color. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be a live interview at three o'clock tomorrow with Caroline. And then on Thursday, I've got a replay of the wonderful interview that I did with Edward Hayden, our celebrity chef, our TV AM um, Morning Ireland um, resident chef. Uh, he's a journalist. He's an, he's a he's written a book. He's an, he's got his own cookery school. Um, he's just an all round amazing guy. And that's Thursday. And then on Friday, I have got um, Paula Rowan, the international glove designer. And that's um, a repeat as well or a replay. So if you haven't seen it, I would absolutely urge you to watch both those videos, Edward's and um, Paula's, because they're just incredible. And what they do is incredible. Um, and you'll be blown away by Paula's amazing, amazing um, gloves. I just love what she does. It's just this world class. It's fantastic. So a couple of people are coming in. Mary Byrne is saying, hello, Mary. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mary. Back to you. Um, Teresa Halliburton is saying, hi, Anne. A great lineup for the week. Thank you. It is very excited about this. I'm actually, this is the way I'm going to manage, I think, my three o'clock live agenda moving forward. It's going to be a mix of live and a mix of the best of the replays. I'm going to cherry pick them. Uh, next week, I'm going to have health as my focus. But for this week, it's it's just fabulousness, <laughs> absolutely fabulousness. And uh, we'll have two live videos as well. So let me see. Lots of people are saying hello to me. And this is just great. 
Teresa Rangal, which is hello. Diane McCarthy was here for the first time yesterday and she's here again today. Hello, Diane. Catherine Waldock is saying hi, Anne from Cork. Emer Kelly is saying hi, Anne. I know that Emer has a particular interest in this design paralysis topic. So if you've got questions from me, Emer, now is the time to ask. Susie Hickman, how did you get on with your kitchen? Good, I hope. Somebody else saying hi, Anne. And Sharon is saying hi, Anne. Hope is well. Loving your slots. I missed them for a while, but great to see you on my timeline again. Sharon, my darling, you missed them for a while because there just weren't any. I had got out of the habit of the 3 p.m. lives and I realized something terrible was missing in my life, and this is what it was. But you know something? I did something crazy nuts today. I decided I would pop my Instagram cherry and do an Instagram live. And it was fine. It was grand. It was absolutely fine. I don't know why I wasted all this time to do one. But you know what? Didn't know how to end it. There was no end broadcast button or end now button. So I had to really sort of <laughs> make it up as I went along. But it was good. So what I'm going to do now for anybody who is on Instagram on Monday and Thursday, I'm going to do a live Instagram video um, every week. Three o'clock okay next monday i'm kicking off with my favorite subject how to hang art how not to hang your art too high how to hang multiple art how to hang art groupings how to do a gallery wall how to hang art up the stairs all of that you know it all but my instagram galleys don't so um that's what i'll be doing on monday and then so i'll do a live interview instagram monday thursday and i'll be doing a live interview facebook tuesday wednesday probably um Sharon is saying we'll see you TikToking yet I do not think so Susie is saying kitchen is going in next week that's great and again you had a little bit of paralysis I hope you don't mind me saying this Susie about your worktop and what to do and now that's all done brainstorming is great absolutely great um Siobhan Savage is up in Belfast and Siobhan is saying hello Siobhan should be over in France now but she's in Belfast I hope the sun is shining oops um new earphones and I'm not sure that they're my best friend or not so anyway let's get stuck in if anybody does have a particular question about being stuck and how to become unstuck well just ask me and I will answer it here uh, I'll keep an eye on the questions as well ah Jane Canning is a Dublin and Jane is saying hi Anne hello Jane how are you and I'm sure I heard Pat Kenny this morning. I was going into the GP to get some bloods taken first thing this morning. And I could hear Pat Kenny saying, oh, it's a gorgeous day in Dublin today. And you know what? It's a gorgeous day in Donegal as well. So hopefully that kind of augurs well for the rest of the country. And if you're outside the country, tell me where you are and tell me what the weather is like with you. But best advice I can give you about being unstuck is to maybe decide in your mind, this is a project. So don't have three or four or five projects on the go at the same time. That's what I do, but that's different. That's what I do. Um, I would advise you to have one project on the go. You start it and you finish it. And you don't undertake anything else until you have that project finished. Um, and there is, so we'll take a sitting room maybe as an example. And what I've started to say was, I actually have written an article um about this very process and how to become unstuck and there's a six step process that i use to help anybody get on top of the project that they're embarking on so i'm going to share that with you if anybody wants that six step pro process if you send me um your email in a private message don't put it on the page in the group page here or in the comments here but send it as a private message and I will email that to you when I'm finished uh, I'll do that at some point this afternoon Jane Canning is saying good Anne I'm actually in Galway and it is overcast it was beautiful in Dublin but listen Galway's beautiful so just enjoy it go with the flow okay so um my son keeps sending me little messages Brian's coming home on Friday uh, first time in almost a year and he's just told me that he's all packed organized already Brian is he's always been really organized not only not like his mother he's more like his father in that respect terribly organized in advance I'm definitely much more creative I'm much more lastminute.com and get it all done anyway but Brian's really organized I can't wait three sleeps to go and I get to hug my baby and it's just I can tell you it's just amazing um okay notes on my phone here to keep me right in case I forget anything but I don't think I will so step one will be painting um if if you're under if you're going to paint a room okay start in this order ceiling 
ceiling rose if you have one and coving first. OK, always do your ceiling first. I always personally paint my ceilings and covings and any plaster work in brilliant white. I do this for a reason. Uh, have I got my paint chart here? I do. I do it for a very strategic reason. I mean, historically, it's the way ceilings were painted. But I know there's been a trend recently of taking the ceilings down, making them darker, painting them a different color. I don't adhere to it. Not really. Um, OK. That's a color trend paint chart, just like the hundred other paint charts that I have got in my bag. What is the color that's on the background of every single paint chart that you're going to use? It's not cream or gray or ivory or blue or green. It's white. Why? Because the paint manufacturers know that that brilliant white will make their color swatches pop, will make their color real. You see the true interpretation of that color on your page, and that's why I paint my ceilings white. Okay, I always do it. I just am a purist in that respect. It doesn't matter if it's a really contemporary home or a more traditional home, and it doesn't matter if you've got coving and you're going to say, but I want my coving to pop out. Your coving is 3D. Your ceiling is flat. Your coving's at an angle. So the color is going to be different anyway because of the amount of shading. So trust me on this, unless you want to paint your ceiling black or whatever, but don't come crying to me afterwards. Um, there is merit sometimes in having a dark ceiling in like a nighttime room, um, cinema type room, cocoony snug room. But generally speaking, I don't do it. OK, so you're going to paint your ceiling first. And that is the very first thing you're going to do. And you know something, sometimes if you want to give your room a refresh, but you don't want to change your paint color, paint's fine. Sometimes, particularly if you've got a fire, an open fire in the room, painting that ceiling white does give it a bit of a lift and just, you know, it just freshens everything up again. Um, Susie is saying to me, no problem. That's what we're talking about her worktop. Yes, I did have design paralysis. I'm still a bit nervous, but the kitchen builder said the worktop will look great. Never mind the kitchen builder. Your interior designer said the worktop is going to look great. When designing, I would say do one thing at a time, layout, colors, appliances, worktops, just my musings. Thank you so much for all your help. Absolutely, one thing at a time, build a picture. Um, Diana saying, what's the best paint and shade to paint skirtings and doors surround, per preferably white? Okay, really good question, Diane. I do tend to use, my preference, believe it or not, is for the brilliant white. So your Dulux brilliant white, Color Trend brilliant white, Fleetwood brilliant white, Fantastic. However, if it's a thing that you want to um, just see, look in here. Um, OK, if you want a white that's not a brilliant white, the Little Green Paint Company Shirting is a gorgeous color. It's a color um, that I could have had all of these up here, couldn't I? I wasn't expecting to be talking about paint colors, to be honest, but um, that's OK. It's fine, but I'll pick that up anyway. Um, okay, the little green paint company colors, love the colors, but this one here called Shirting is a gorgeous soft white. It's it's an old white. It's more like an aged white rather than a pristine, brilliant white. So if you want something a little bit softer, um, something like the Shirting, that will be one of my go-to colors. I use that quite a bit. And then there's another one here called Milk Teeth. It's a, there's a very dirty paint chart because it's been used so much. It's a color trend historic range and milk teeth would be another gorgeous soft white. If you want something that's not absolutely pristine, but is still a nice white, that would be a lovely contrast um, to the rest of the room. I get so distracted to see these. I'm saying something and I see the mess just coming up and it's very easy to distract me. Mary Bright is saying, did that this week looks good. I present, I think and Mary says she painted her ceiling. And it really does. It really does freshen up your room um, because you get used to seeing it a little bit grubby and discolored and then you see it painted and it's just so fresh. And that's all that you've done. Now, Katrina Lancaster's got a question for me. Hi, Anne. On a room with a wooden paneling. Oh, gee, sorry. What have I done? OK. Hi, Anne. On a room with wooden paneling up with 12 inches of ceiling. Sorry. Ooh. Hi, Anne. On a room with wooden paneling up to with 12 inches of ceiling. Would you paint the wall brilliant white of painting panelling? I plan on painting panelling cobalt freeze for colour trend. Thank you, Anne. Skirting and door surrounds is brilliant white also. OK, I I'm, think I'm missing a word here, Katrina. Hi, Anne. On a room with wooden panelling. 
Ah, now I'm with you. The wooden panelling is up to 12 inches of the ceiling. Would you paint the wall brilliant white of painting panelling? I would. I would actually, because you know what? That will actually um that'll actually push your ceilings up a bit more because you're gonna have that white area above um your picture rail height, and then you've got your white ceiling, so it's gonna pop it up and the coat it's gonna give a gorgeous pop of contrast to the lovely colour that you've got. Now that sounds exciting. I love the sound of that. Diana saying thanks, Anne. Great advice. You are very, very welcome. Okay, so painting, sorry, my phone keeps knocking off. Um Okay, so paint your ceilings. Next, paint your walls. I always use a matte paint. Matte paint, now that we can get washable matte paints, and in fact, even with the color trend, you can get the scrubbable diamond matte paint with Fleetwood, you've got, you know, super duper washable, scrubbable matte paints. Um, Little Green have an, um, an intelligent, no, that's intelligent eggshell, it's different. But anyway, most of the paints will have a washable paint. So go for a matte paint, paint, um, particularly in an older house where you might have lumps and bumps in your walls or maybe not totally perfect, you will get a very forgiving finish. And it's lovely. The pigment is flat, so the colour is true and it's just gorgeous. Okay, um, so you've painted your ceiling, you've painted your walls. Now I want you to go and do your woodwork, your doors, your skirting, your architrave and your windowsills. And we've discussed that. I do like to use uh, a brilliant white, but like I said, you could use something like the um, little green shirting or the milk teeth from Color Trend. And there's one in Fleetwood one as well. It's fabulous. Its name just eludes me just now. But there's lots of them that are very soft, clean white. Uh, you don't want something that's ivory or grubby because you really want it to pop against the contrast of the color. That um, and it's not that it's, it doesn't have to be a dramatic contrast. It could be a toning contrast, but a clean white will always enhance the color of the walls, always. And if you don't believe me, get some tester pots and try it out, but it definitely, definitely works. Um, okay. And finally, last thing you do in your room, if you're going to do any wallpapering, if you're doing feature walls and wallpaper or whatever, do that last. You do not want your wallpaper damaged. So wallpaper is the very last thing to go up and then you can carefully get your furniture in and happy days, you've got a gorgeous room. So if anybody is procrastinating about redecorating a room at the moment, that's all you have to do. And if you want that guide, it's a six step guide, I will um, gladly and happily um, send it to anybody who wants it okay um step two is flooring um so flooring is permanent so it's one thing that i will say to you take your time and picking your floor don't rush into your floor um horses for courses decide what kind of a floor you need you know do you need do you need a timber floor do you need a hard floor do you need a hard surface like um tiles do you want something soft like a luxury um luxury vinyl do you want carpet um if you're going to go with a timber floor is there going to be an awful lot of traffic on that floor so do you want a hardwood floor do you want the hassle of refinishing it every couple of years or whatever depending on the traffic i had three sons and two dogs so our timber floor has got a lot of resurfacing um it was French oak that actually came from uh, a church in Brittany. Uh, it was gorgeous. We bought the entire contents of the church. Every board from the church came to our old house. And we literally just had enough to finish the entire house. It was a lot of timber. Um, and But it did have to be refinished. So think about this. And if you're building a new house and you want to put down a timber floor, remember your options are more limited. Um, with your underfloor heating, you can have an engineered floor. But bear in mind, too, that that engineered floor is going to need um, sanding down over time. And you may not have a huge amount of timber on top to work with. So you might get two sandings out of, out of it. And that's it. So ha have no worries about going for a high quality laminate floor. If you want a timber floor that will withstand any abuse, you can get um, waterproof ones now and a water resistant and you can put them in your kitchens you know you can put them throughout your entire house you can have wide boards you can have long boards you can have whatever you want um so that's if you go for timber decide whether you want hardwood or laminate i'd be pushing you more towards a laminate believe it or not high quality good quality laminate with the correct perforated underlay underneath for your 
um, underfloor heating if you want to put down a laminate floor and it's upstairs and you don't have bison slabs or holocore um, you can get um, an insulated acoustic underlay that can go under your timber that will actually reduce the noise in apartments I often use that if I were designing an apartment um, with you know people below or above because it does definitely um, cushion the impact of the noise. Um, if you're picking a carpet, I would urge you to go for a bleach cleanable carpet because it means then that somebody can spill coffee or wine or motor oil or fake tan or whatever, and you can actually clean it with water, a very liquid, and um, your, your carpet won't look grubby. It's going to look amazing. It's a bit like the AquaClean fabrics for carpets, okay? Uh, Nolene is saying thank you, Anne. You're very welcome. Um, Okay, so flooring, um, again, going back to the high quality vinyls, they're lovely and soft underfoot. They're not a cheap option. You definitely get what you pay for. Uh, you can use them with underfloor heating and um, they're certainly very safe with older people and falling or um, with children, or children either, you know, playing and falling. So there's lots of different things. So research your floor very, very carefully. Don't rush into that. If you pick the wrong paint for your wall, you can always change it. But if you've been listening to me for the last 12 months or more, you won't pick the wrong paint because you'll have everything else to, done first and then you'll pick the correct paint. Um, but don't rush into your floor. Same if you're building a new house, consider your flooring very carefully. I do tend to use the same flooring without as much as I can um, because it just gives us a wonderful feeling of opening up the space and yet keeping everything linked and grounded and having a beautiful flow throughout your space. Teresa Hallibur says, can you paint floor tiles? The answer is yes. Have I done it? The answer is no. Um, however, just like in every other discipline of interior design, technology is helping. So Teresa, I would, you're in Galway, I would get in touch with the Carlo Paint Tub, talk to Kate or somebody there. They have some paints that they are saying that you can use. You obviously have to prep your tiles properly. You have to now you can paint floorboards, of course you can, but I presume you're talking about tiles. So Carlo Paint Hub, talk to Kate. She does have some products that, and they have done some pretty heavy duty testing on these tiles and on the painted tiles um, to see what the longevity is like and what the durability is like. So if you really want to do it, Teresa, I would get in touch with her because it's a bit like everything. Prep is important and using the right product is important. So lots of people have been doing it. Only and if you if you asked me this a year ago, I would have said absolutely no way, don't do it. But now there are products there that you can do. I've often painted wall tiles. I've often painted them white. And um, because the grout lines are white anyway, so maybe dated tiles in the bathroom or wall tiles or dated tiles, you know, behind um, a splash back in a kitchen, I've often painted white and that has worked really, really well. Um, but yes, to answer that question, Teresa, yes, you can paint floor tiles now, but talk to the Carlo Paint Hub about that. Okay, anybody else got any other questions? Sorry. Step three is a big one as well in a room. And the room that I'm picking is, is, is a living room, really, I suppose, because it's a room that's going to cost you the most. You know, bedrooms are easy. And bedrooms, you don't have, you don't have the same spend on the bedroom unless you want to have. Um, so the next thing I'm going to urge you about is urge you to think about of your sofas and armchairs. And you know that I've talked to you about this before and I've told you about the importance of having the right sized furniture in the room. So you measure everything and you measure again and again and you put down newspaper templates in your room to make sure. And when you're going to your shop, take your floor plans with you and let the guys in the shop have a peek as well. And some of them will have software and they will put the, um, the dimensions of whatever you pick on the floor. Remember too that many of the manufacturers will actually custom make for you a little bit wider, a little bit taller, a little bit longer. So there's no reason why you can't get the perfect furniture for your space. And you know, I've got an article too on 10 things nobody ever told you about buying a sofa. If anybody is going buying a sofa, um, send me a message and I will send that to you as well. I'll email it to you as well. If you just email me or DM me or private message me your email address because sofas, you know, it's a lifetime 
investment almost, you know, it would last a long time. So you want to buy something that's good quality at your price point. Do look at the AquaClean fabrics when you're looking at your sofas because they're game changers. You can have a white or an off-white sofa that's very easily maintained. Um, so just to know all of these things, be aware of this before you go out. Another little tip for buying sofas, will you please, where you can, go for un unpatterned sofas. Go for a plain sofa in a neutral color that you love because you can add as many scatter cushions in whatever colors you want to that sofa and change the look of it over the seasons or you know as the years go by. Tomorrow I've got Caroline Duffy, the textile artist on with me. She does design um, cushions. She has designed fabrics for our Scatterbox. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about that and how you can upgrade your look with art and cushions and things like that. Um, Diane said, what paint do you use for kitchen wall tiles? I actually used a Ron Seal paint, Diane. It's a Ron Seal wall paint. But I do believe, again, as the paint shops, I think some of the other paint companies have got others as well. And certainly the Cardo Paint Hub would be a really good resource as well because um, they do tons and tons. You follow them on Instagram. I've actually got to try and get Kate on here with me, to be honest. Um, I've been meaning to do that for ages because I think it would be a really, really informative, good session, whether I do it here or on Instagram. She may be more comfortable on Instagram. Um, I'm more comfortable here, but listen, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Did that today. I did that. I didn't even think about it. I thought about it for a five minutes. I thought, you know what, Anne, it's time. And I pressed that live button and then I didn't know how to turn it off. So I'll have to do a bit more research. Well, I'm glad I did it because that's out of the way now. And I can go ahead and do some live collaborations on Instagram. Um, so with Carl Paint Hub, I will definitely, definitely try my best to get them on because it will be just amazing. And you'll learn so, so much. And it's, it's, it's they have, um, sorry, I keep my password on my phone keeps going on me. Um, they have products that nobody else have, specialist products. So for things like painting floors and painting furniture and um, painting wall tiles, go to for you. Okay, so you've got your floor is done, your floor is sorted. Um, and another thing to put down your floor first. If you, if you need a new floor, put that floor down first. Um, and then you can go ahead and do your painting. Uh, then you can put your big furniture in, your sofas and your chairs. Now I want you to think about your occasional furniture, your lamp tables, your lamps, your coffee tables, um, all those bits and pieces that fill up a room. I do not want you to over clutter the room. I can remember years and years ago when I did the RTE show house for Shane Filan, I was critiqued for one room. It was the only room I didn't win, even though I thought the room was gorgeous. Do you know what? I put too much furniture into that space. I actually did have it a little bit, um, just a bit less would have been better, okay? <laughs> a bit less. So it's a lesson that I learned. And you know, when you learn a lesson and the RT cameras are rolling and it's going out live on RT, it's a lesson you'll never, ever forget. Um, so less is always more. But obviously, you need functional furniture. If you need it, if you want a coffee table in the center of your room, but you need storage, think of one of the trunk coffee tables that you can actually lift the lid and put your kids' toys or newspapers or whatever needs to go into that, um, you know, throws, extra throws or whatever you keep, it can be tidily kept there. Um, one thing that all of the shops have at the minute, particularly the easy livings and the DFSs and places like that, are um, nests of tables, but they're metal nests of tables in gold and gilt and copper. A lot of them are circular, they might have a mirror top, very handy. They're gorgeous to have either side of a sofa to have your lamps on, but then you've got the table underneath that you can take out for your cup of tea or your glass of wine or your gin and tonic or whatever your thing is. Um, so get your backs and pieces in. Either side of the fireplace, I like to have a console table or a sideboard one side, TV the other side, unless it's a contemporary home where you've got a lower slung fireplace and your TV can easily go above it. If you've got a traditional mantle, traditional fireplace, do not be tempted to put your television on top. It's too high. It will destroy your neck and we all carry our tension in our neck. So it is absolutely the wrong thing to do and very bad for your children to be doing as well if they're playing PlayStation or Xbox or whatever they do and they're constantly you know, they play on the consoles and they're all remote now, but they're still doing it on the TV and it's hurting their neck. So no hurting necks. OK, same when you're buying your furniture. For goodness sake, get furniture that looks well, that looks fantastic. That is also really functional and comfortable. Support your neck. I carry all of my tension on my neck. Even now it feels a bit tense. Um, 
so you need something that will support your neck you will need something that supports your back um if you want reclining furniture you know go for nice ergometric reclining furniture that reclines well if you've got a small room some of the sofas recline in a very clever way in the sense that they don't push the sofa back they recline forward i know that um Parker Knoll do an amazing contemporary one. And I know Parker Knoll and contemporary are not two words that you want to hear in the same or are used to hearing in the same conversation, but really clever. So think about this. Always consider the space that you have. You will find the perfect furniture for that space. You will find the perfect look, but it must be functional. It must be comfortable. It must be durable. And it must work with everything else that you have in your space. Teresa saying thanks to me. So she'll be hightailing it off to Carlo now to talk to Kate. Um, so when you have all of that in place, the fun stuff are your accents. Your, oh, sorry, my phone is really playing up on me. So your accents and soft furniture, this is what I love. This is like, you know, when you've got your floor and your walls and your sofa in place, it's almost like you've got your makeup on, you've got your foundation on, and you probably had a bit of blusher. Now you want to do your eyes and find a fabulous lipstick. So your accents and soft furnishings are absolutely the way to go. Again, if you want somewhere to start, if you're getting really stuck and you don't know where to start with all of this, if you start with your, so your, your fabrics, this could be a fabric on a roll and blind at the window, it could be your curtains, it could be gorgeous cushions, start with that. Because when you pick that beautiful cushion that you love or that beautiful fabric, it just makes your heart sing. Then you can pick your paint color to work with that. Um, so the palette, the canvas is perfect. Um, so now is the time to add your art. And if you're unsure about how to hang your art, um, if you still feel you're hanging it too high or you don't really know, there is a video here. You'll have to scroll, scroll right back to find wherever I did the video on how to hang art, how to hang, if you wanna hang two pictures together, if you wanna hang three pictures, four pictures, six pictures, if you wanna do a gallery wall, that's all there for you. But if you wanna be lazy, you can wait until Monday, and at three o'clock on Monday on Instagram, on Room Junkie Am, I will do a video live on Instagram showing you how to arrange your art. Okay, and when you've got your sofas and furniture in place, it's so much easier to hang your art. Because if you're hanging a piece of art over your sofa, you're actually going to take it a bit lower. I take it six to eight inches above the top of the sofa. Um, if you're hanging it above your fireplace or if you're hanging a mirror above your fireplace, only a couple of inches um, from the bottom of the mirror to the top of the fireplace mantle, um, you'll have more space between the top of the mirror and the ceiling height, and that's the way it is. Um, then you add in things like flowers and picture frames and sculptures or whatever your thing is, whatever you want to embellish the room. You add your cushions, you pick your throws, you pick your light, and the last thing you do is add your rug and your room is finished. Um, any questions at all, you can hit me with anything at all. Frank keeps sending me messages. I think he's just, he's dying to get home just as much as we are um, dying to have him home. So the very last bit is your jewellery and that's all your little embellishments. But always remember, less is more. Don't fill up your room um, with your flowers. If you're putting flowers in a vase, remember the florist rule, odd number of flowers. If you're buying flowers, they'll always be given to you in an odd number. If you're arranging um, picture frames together, odd number as well, 135. That's the way to do it. Uh, it just looks better that way. Any, and any other questions at all? No, ah, Lorraine Bradley is there. Did I say hello to you, Lorraine? I'm not sure if I did or not. Okay. So having a process and going back to, oh gosh, I've done something, sorry. Um, going back to what Susie said was, if I can find Susie's message. Um, One thing at a time yeah absolutely but the one thing at a time must be part of the bigger picture so before you even start you need to have your put the jigsaw together do your mood board do your real mood board not just a virtual mood board if you have a piece of fabric if you've got a swatch of paint if you've got a piece of your timber flooring or your new carpet if you've got a piece of your curtains um your coordinates and cushions if you could put all of those together 
on the floor in that room, the room becomes, the whole concept becomes real for you. And you'll actually be able to, even if you're not visual, you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to work from that. So if anybody does want that rich map, just send, literally just direct message me your email and I'll send it to you. Um, and if anybody wants the 10 things that nobody told you about buying a sofa, um, I will also send that to you. And for Mary, and I think Mary's the only one here that this applies to, um, for all the girls who are waiting for the Finding Your Fabulous information, it's nearly ready. <laughs> I've actually been working really hard all day today on it and I'm putting a lot of effort into it because it's really important to me uh, because this process has worked so so well for me. It's brought me out of a place of being stuck and just not being totally happy and I feel a bit overwhelmed and attracting the wrong things into my life. Um, so the processes that I've used absolutely changed my life transformed my life um so this is what we're going to be doing come september and i just can't wait to share it so i don't know that i'll have it finished today because i'm not going to rush it but i'll certainly have it finished by tomorrow i'm sort of seven eighths of the way there um i just have two more pieces to write and that's it then it's all done dusted and i will share it here tomorrow um because i will be here with caroline anyway so i'll be in the page and if anybody has a question that you didn't think of today you can ask me tomorrow as well um but i'm very excited about that so for all of you who are waiting for um this information for me from me about the finding your fabulous it's very close we're very very close um, and it's going to be worth waiting for i think mary good question blinds or curtains depends on the room depends on the room mary um i love roman blinds but in the right spot, I love curtains as well. Now, I don't like curtains that take light away from your room. So if you're going to have curtains, if you're investing in new curtains, will you for heaven's sake, make sure that you have a, a long enough pole and you can hang your curtains higher so that they drape the window beautifully. So in a bigger room and you want to have curtains or if it's a more classically styled traditional home, curtains are always great. They're always elegant, beautiful fabric, fabric that you absolutely love. The style of curtain can be I tend to veer towards two. In a more contemporary setting, um, or if I really want a lot of light coming into the room, I would go for an eyelet curtain, either ready-mades with a 30 mil eyelet, or I'd have them custom made with a big 60 mil or bigger eyelet on a bigger pole, but stacked back from, from the window. And I also love a double pleat or triple pleat, a French pleat curtain, because they're so elegant. You can hang them straight, you can hang them you know, with a tie back, you can hang them or drape them behind a hold back, whatever you like. So in a more formal room or maybe in your bedroom, if you like the luxury of curtains, go with it. Uh, a smaller room and certainly in a more contemporary home or in a kitchen. Not a fan of curtains in the kitchen at all, except on your patio doors or decent, or decent sized windows. But certainly I don't want any curtains anywhere near your sink or um, your worktops. Roman blinds are a much better bet there. You can bring in a beautiful pop of color because you're hanging the blind higher. So it's not taking away valuable light coming in. I usually make it to the width of the window board so that it's nice and wide. And when it's down, it comes down onto the window board. It doesn't just cover the window and it certainly doesn't go into the recess of the window because that will definitely take away too much light because it's hanging down too low. Um, so it depends on the room fall in love with your fabric and then if you want the luxury of curtains if you want the look of curtains if you want the elegance of curtains do it and if not go for blinds and you can interline your roman blinds as well which makes them really thick and luxurious i often do that with a silk silk blind or i bit my tongue there um a silk blind or a fake silk blind the taffeta silks you know um yeah so it's whatever you like there's no right or wrong except that i wouldn't put heavy, heavy curtains in a small room or on a small window because they're just going to dwarf the space and rob your light. Okay, Catherine, let me put Catherine's message up here and we can all see it. Okay, um, hi Anne, I've recently done a cozy room for myself. Uh, I like the side of a cozy room for myself and have my work desk on one side of the fireplace. I was going to put shelves on the other side to hold my books, library, or is it something else you'd recommend for me? Um, she has her work desk on one side of the fireplace and I was going to put shelves at the other side. No, I have no problem with that. You could have um, 
if you need storage, you could have a sideboard on the other side and you can still have your shelves. Um, or you could do a whole library unit, uh, get a handyman to do um, like a built-in unit and put light into it to have your books. Um, and depending on the work desk that you have, it doesn't have to be a functional desk. If you've got an attractive desk that's at the right height, I have no problem with that. What I do have the problem with is a chair. You must have a proper office chair. I, I love my office chair here. It's actually, it's really retro. It's almost like a 1950s chair. Um, and it's got walnut on the arms and it's got red leather, lovely dull red leather. It's not red, lipstick red. But it's um, it's gorgeous and it's really comfortable. But I do also have a cushion at my back as well because I like a lot of support for my back. So yeah, if you want your books on display, do that absolutely. Uh, you can even get floating shelves. In fact, even in the likes of Homebase and um, Atlantic Home Care and places like that, you can get lovely floating shelves and get a handyman to put them up for you. So no, that sounds good to me. I like the sound of your cozy, cozy space. Okay, um, right, well, that's it. I'm gonna go because I really want to get stuck in to finishing off my Finding Your Fabulous um, program. Uh, so we're starting in September, but you can join up now um, as a founding member. So if anybody wants to know any more about that, if you're feeling a bit stuck, if you're feeling just that your confidence has taken a knock over this tough time that we've been through, if you've lost interest in yourself, if you've lost interest in your house, um, you know, if you've been through, maybe there's been family illness, there's been sadness, and you're just not in a great place, this is for you. This is definitely for you. And I can't wait for us to get stuck in. Already some of the girls are have joined and I know them. They're just amazing. And it's going to be the most powerful three months that we've ever done in our lives. And you know what? I have plenty going on at the minute as well. So it's going to be good for me too. And I will get stuck in at the very start of September and I will find my fabulous again. again. With the rest of you that's for sure um diane said thank you really enjoyed all the tips that's great that's fantastic so listen i go and get stuck in again because once i get distracted sometimes i don't always want to go back to what i was doing beforehand ah jackie kearney's there i'm sure the sun is shining up and luke and jackie uh, okay uh right well i'm gonna go um i will be back here tomorrow at three o'clock with caroline so that should be really, really good. I haven't spoken to her before, but I love her work. So I'm really, I'll post that now. I'll post the um, reminder for her chat tomorrow. So that's three o'clock tomorrow. And then Thursday, you've got Edward Hayden. And on Friday, we have got the fabulous Paula Rowan gloves. Okay. And Jackie said the sun is shining and look at where it probably always shines, you lucky girl. Emerson, thank you, Anne. I need to sort my head now and decide where to start. Oh, gosh. Well, if you want me to send you any of those bits and pieces, I will, Emer. And, you know, if you've got specific questions, ask them tomorrow as well. That's fine. Oh, there's a butterfly at my window trying to get into me. Okay, I'm going to go. Have a lovely evening. Enjoy that lovely day while you have it. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. So stay safe and stay fabulous. And I look forward to the chats with Caroline tomorrow. And see, I love Facebook. I can see this little box saying end broadcast. Instagram doesn't give you that. So I shall now end broadcast and I'll see you tomorrow.